Welcome to Famous Fortunes. I hope you are well. Spooky Saturday it is. It is the 75th anniversary of the Roswell incident, whatever that was, in uh, three days, I believe. It's uh, in three days, the 5th of July. So very close, but it is almost the 75th anniversary. So what happened that day, uh, night, <laughs> what have you? What happened 75 years ago, almost 75 years ago to the day. I appreciate it's not quite 75 years, but it's close enough. Uh, we're going to ask the question, what was it? Uh, an extraterrestrial crash? Uh, aliens? Interdimensionals? Who knows? Or maybe it was something more uh, terrestrial, perhaps? Earth, you know, from the Earth, let's say. Uh, something a, a human made. Or, you know... Maybe it was nothing at all. Maybe it was just uh, something someone just made up. It's possible. Uh, and we're going to open our minds to all possibility. But before I begin, uh, I'm going to say welcome to Spooky Saturday, of course. I'm also going to say this, that let's get some full disclosure out before we get into the reading. Do I believe uh, in aliens? I guess this is the question we're, we're looking at. And... From my experience, I think the phenomenon is more interdimensional than perhaps we realize uh, on a sort of cultural scale. At least in our culture, every other culture recognizes interdimensional entities. But that's you know another story for another time. Uh, never mind that. Never mind. We seem to be the only sort of hyper materialistic culture uh, on planet Earth right now. But in any event. Uh, that's, you know, just gives a different perspective to things when you're the only one that doesn't realize they or recognize, uh, because you can't in this materialistic culture, you can't recognize that there is, uh, a, another realm around us. There is uh, energy, uh, things that can be energetic and not purely materialistic. And this is a big shift in consciousness for our culture and for, you know, humanity really to open our awareness to other energies and to other realms. And it's a, it's a big shortcoming of our own culture to not open our minds. But with all that said, let's <laughs> almost, let's get back down to, let's get back down to earth now. And uh, let's have a look at this Roswell incident. What actually happened? Now, um, first question I'm going to ask, are we talking about an extraterrestrials? Or are we talking uh, about a phenomenon that is, you know, are we talking about aliens? Let's let's ask that question. Number one, are we talking about aliens, crash landing, alien craft? Are we talking about actual aliens? Interestingly, <laughs> interestingly, there was an episode of X Files way back in the day about a down UFO. I believe it was even the first season of the X-Files. I uh, could be mistaken, but the episode was called Fallen Angel. Uh, I thought that was a very, very uh, interesting take on the situation. Uh, maybe they're giving us a clue. Maybe they're giving us a clue, folks. Fallen Angels. I mean, there's been a few of them. There's been a few of them, I think, uh, over time. But that's another story. Uh, do I think Roswell is a fallen angel? No, I don't, I don't believe that. But let's let's ask the question. Was Roswell extraterrestrials? All right. Cards are hot. I love Spooky Saturdays. King of Swords. Metal element. Uh, pentacles. Ten of Pentacles. Six of Pence. Five of Wands. And Judgment. Underlying Energy. Pentacles, Nine of Pentacles. Okay, so the answer is, I don't believe from these cards, it was extraterrestrials. Now, that may, you know, that's, that's probably going to piss a lot of people off, let's be honest. And, you know, I, I have to say what I see on the cards. And I mean, let's, you know, let's just get it out there. A lot of, a lot of things that are in the, you know, cultural ether, the cultural experience, are uh, not correct. And that's, <laughs> that's, that's the way it is. Uh, now, you know, for example, I've spoken about grey aliens in a previous episode of Famous Fortunes, and I have myself seen a grey alien, and I can tell you they are not uh, physical apparitions. They are interdimensional entities. And I've spoken about this at length before, 
there are different species of interdimensional entities that are coexisting, if you like, or overlapping with this particular place that we're in. And they can be experienced strongly in certain places or in certain modes of consciousness that we can move in and out of. You know, the easiest one, let's say, or the most accidental one is the period of sleep or between sleep and waking. The other big one is sunset or sunrise. This is where a lot of trouble can come with dreams and all this interference. I'm almost throwing the camera. Coming with interference from the other side, really, this, uh, this other dimension. Not a lot of good comes from this place. Let's, like, I think we need to get this <laughs> on the table. Not a lot of good does come from this dimension. Really, a lot of the influence is of a demonic nature. There's nothing really good, sort of, you know. A lot of people, I think, perhaps more of... Uh, of cur uh, the people of curiosity have a certain interest in this place. And they you know, want contact and they look for contact and all this. But if you actually have real contact with the entities, uh, you quickly realize they're not actually, they're not actually very good. A lot of them uh, are very, very negative and can unleash a tremendous demonic influence on human, humanity as, as a whole. Uh, which they do say a lot of... Uh, in the higher teachings, they do say a lot of the practices revolve around spiritual protection. This is the the long and short of it. <laughs> really, it's not about, you know, people thinking, oh, you know, doing all this, you know, I want to sort of spy on my neighbors with witchcraft. <laughs> I don't know what people are thinking, you know, but actually it's really um, a lot of it is protection from this particular realm because it is so strong. It doesn't take much of one's heart to open to realize the demonic influence that has come upon the earth at this time is very, very, very powerful. But what does this have to do with the Roswell incident? Well, not a lot, incidentally, from these cards. There's a lot of pentacle energy here, which is earth energy. There's also a lot of metal energy here, the king of swords. So the king of swords is of the metal element. It is the most... Uh, powerful card of the metal element. It is a very masculine metal energy, uh, a very, um, you know, almost warlike metal energy. So do I think that there was some type of vehicle or craft or something of this nature involved with this particular incident in some way? I do. Yeah, I do. I think so. Uh, do I think it's extraterrestrials? No, not at all. Um, it looks like the the craft itself met its, well, it met its fate with judgment. It uh, looks like, was there some type of, uh, let's say, battle that was taking place between people, really? This is humanity. This is, of the, we're asking, are we looking for extraterrestrials? Well, we're seeing humanity. This is the card of humanity here. Uh, in a broader sense, the Ten of Coins. So let that be known. I would say that if I were to just read the cards as they are here, I would have to say that this is a terrestrial event. I'm, I'm not even seeing interdimensionals here. So, you know, we've sort of taken a detour down that street. But uh, to sort of bring it back, I'm not seeing interdimensionals. I'm not seeing extraterrestrials. I'm seeing terrestrial warfare. Interestingly, the first episode on UFOs we did on Famous Fortunes, uh, we arrived at that exact same conclusion that these, you know, Tic Tacs and all the rest of it are uh, Earth, uh, f from the Earth, or from, let's say, well, you need to see the episode, you need to see the episode, but they're very much an Earth phenomenon of some sort, rather than um, extraterrestrials flying around. Now, that... It's a sort of a different topic, and it, you know, we're talking about the real. I think the real mother load is on the interdimensionals. You know, they, and this is really where 
the knowledge is becoming like it's it's almost like this ufo phenomenon is become like a damn wall and it's holding back the knowledge of the interdimensionals from permeating or penetrating the culture and it's all physical you know entities from extra you know other planets and all this the craft are all physical in nature and all this and there is some understanding of the interdimensionality that's coming but it's really being held back by this great lie of of ufos from outer space really they're from another dimension and you know if you want to see entities you really sometimes you don't even need to look further than your own house and you find them if you you know <laughs> i hope you don't have them there but chances are maybe you do so uh, let that be known but you know i mean other places there are places of very very strong negative uh, energy that can attract them more but even even spiritual places can attract them they are they these creatures do have free will so they can some of them could be you know religious even you know it's certainly it's certainly possible um in my experience these entities that are put it this way only the really the evil ones want to interact with humans really this is the this is the crux of it for the most part the evil or mischievous ones or you know little shits basically <laughs> this is really the truth and it's probably wise not to sort of dig too deeply into this phenomenon some people unfortunately in this world uh i wouldn't say blessed with this sort of insight but they certainly have the experience and knowledge of it but it's not something that you would really if you if say for example if you were this person it's not something you'd ask for <laughs> it's not it's not it's not necessarily something you know you kind of want to be involved with because you know apparently it's difficult to sort of you know it, it's hard to shut off you know once that door's open it becomes very um it, it becomes very technical and challenging to close it but that's you know that's what i hear so in any event in any event uh what happened that day let's ask that question what happened that day What actually happened that day? With the, let's say this craft of metal, but this, you know, whatever it is, what, whatever this thing is, what actually happened that day? Cards are hot. Queen of Swords. So the King of Swords to the Queen of Swords. Isn't that interesting? Still the metal element. Two of Wands. Page of Wands. Nine of Cups. King of Wands. Underlying Energy, Ace of Swords. Hmm. Well, we've seen the Pentacles just clear up, haven't we? <laughs> Now we have seen some of the fire element. Peculiar shift in energy, I have to say. There's, to me, there's, it, I, I don't know if this would be, it, how I could say this other than father and son. Is a father and son here, that were like a partnership or a team? Maybe they've come across something. Uh, they've come across something that was, let's say, in its inactive state with the Queen of Swords. So it's interesting how the tarot has shown us the King of Swords in its active state, which is, I think, the state it's intended to operate in. And now we're seeing it in its inactive state and it's being sort of found by two people and they're quite happy with the find here. Uh, I would say they stumbled upon this, stumbled upon this find, um, observed it maybe, and then they've come across it. 
they've they've come across it maybe they've traveled to find it perhaps um, but they definitely seem very happy with themselves what did they think it was let's let's ask that question what did they think it was give us more insight actually uh two of swords seven of swords three of coins prince of wands uh ten of cups underlying energy judgment so this is judgment card again so okay so it's it's met its final you know state here judgment i think and this is coming back to the card in the first reading you know i'm not sure they knew what it was two of swords they had no idea but they took it away with them or they took maybe a piece of it away with them, or pieces of it, or parts of it. Uh, I don't know if they took the whole thing. Uh, they had, I think they had a difficult time understanding what it was they found. Uh, they showed it to family. Uh, they took it away in a, let's say, a, a vehicle. I don't know, maybe a car, I'd say. I mean, that's a modern-day horse, isn't it? Isn't that right? Isn't a car a, a modern-day horse? Looks like a nice horse this guy has. <laughs> I'm not sure what that's. I don't know why I, why I feel that. But anyway, uh, the the Ten of Cups here is this uh, family. So family's the sort of destination here. And then you can see the next card's actually disappointment. They feel they've lost. There's a loss here now. Loss could be maybe they, you know, didn't find what they thought they found or maybe it was taken away from them. But they're, they're just definitely experiencing a loss here. And maybe it was what they took away with them was taken away from them. So what was the object? Let's, let's ask that question. What was the object itself? Cards are hot. Uh, Queen of Pentacles, Queen of Swords, Queen of Pentacles, Strength, the Sun, the Sun, Page of Pentacles, Nine of Cups, Underlying Energy, Ten of Pentacles, King of Swords, King of Swords, what's this other card? Oh, the Fool, interesting. Ah, uh, okay, the King of Swords, made of metal of some of type. Hmm. What was the object? Strength, Queen of Sol Queen of Pentacles. The sun's interesting because are we actually talking about some type of atmospheric, you know, weather thing? I mean, it's possible. It is possible. I've heard those things. When you see the sun, you think of weather. You think of, you know, that type of thing. It's possible. It's possible. I'm not getting a whole lot, to be honest with you, with this particular spread. <laughs> Strength is interesting. Strength is actually quite an interesting card. Is are we talking about? <sighs> yeah, it's it's interesting. Some type of. I mean, was the device powerful, or am I overreaching here when I'm looking at this particular card? That's that's a tough one. Hmm. Maybe, M maybe, maybe. Energy, the sun, energy from the sun, energy from the sun, maybe collecting energy from the sun, some type of thing. Energy, harnessing the sun's energy. Are we talking about prototypical solar panels? Is that, I mean, that's what it looks like to me. Uh, that's what it looks like. And it's there, it's sort of collecting, uh, it's... 
storing, even storing energy from the sun. Uh, th that's kind of the vibe I get. Now, I mean, it's <laughs> I've never seen solar panels or any type of photoelectric device on the cards before. So this is our first. This is the first year of famous fortunes. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy uh, let it be known let it be known that uh, this is a this is a first on Famous Fortunes uh, I like Spooky Saturdays it's, it, I think it's my favourite day of the week and it is it's certainly enjoyable I'll say that if you have a question for a future episode of Spooky Saturdays get in there in the comments let it be known do not hold back and of course I will see you in the comment section